الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be upon his final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Inshallah tonight will be our first lecture of a series of lectures explaining Imam Bukhari's Al-Adab Al-Mufrad and we said what's important about this book it mentions the etiquettes, the rights of the people around you. And in this book, people know that Imam Bukhari, they know him from the Sahih, okay? al Jam al Sahih. In this book, he did not make as a condition to mention all the authentic hadiths. So he mentions all the hadith that related to these topics and books that he mentions in this uh, Adab al-Mufrad, but he does not make as a condition to mention all that is authentic. So he mentions everything. So we'll come across some hadith that are not authentic, but it will be beneficial for us to understand, okay, and be, and be aware of this hadith. And most of the hadith are authentic anyways in this book. And we will start with the first book, which is Kitabul Walidain, okay? This book of parents. So it's gonna be talking about the different rights of the parents and the different hadith regarding this. The first hadith we have, the first chapter is Babu Qawlihi Ta'ala wa wassayna al-insana bi walidayhi ihsana. So this first chapter is, the Bukhari mentioned a verse. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruct, instructing mankind to be good to their parents. Wa wassayna al-insana bi walidayhi ihsana. And the first hadith mentioned here is a story when a man came to Ibn Mas'ud. He said, سَأَلْتُ النَّبِيَّ Ibn Mas'ud said, سَأَلْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَيُّ الْعَمَلِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَيُّ الْعَمَلِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ قال الصلاة على وقتها قلت ثم أي قال بر الوالدين قلت ثم أي قال ثم الجهاد في سبيل الله وَلَوْ اسْتَزَدْتُهُ حَدَّثَنِي بِهِنْ وَلَوْ اسْتَزَدْتُهُ لَزَادَنِي Okay, so Ibn Mas'ud asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu this question. What are the most beloved deeds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? And the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, As-salatu ala waqtiha. So the single most important act of worship that you can do is As-salatu ala waqtiha, praying on time. Praying on time. And this is mentioning, this is, of course, is regarding the obligatory prayers. The Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. And a Muslim is obliged not just to obey Allah and to do these prayers, but most importantly, to do them on time. That's why one of the most beloved acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, these five prayers, you pray them on time. Because every single prayer has a specific time. And many people fall or many people make this mistake, especially Fajr prayer. Fajr prayer starts, okay, we have the watches here. It ends with sunrise. It ends with sunrise. So you can pray it all the way until sunrise. Once sunrise occurs, khalas, that time has elapsed and finished. So you're not excused. For those people who say, well, we have work, we have to wake up, they set their alarm clocks after sunrise, that's a problem. That's a problem, okay? Is, is prayer, is your work more important than your obligatory prayer? That's a big problem. Just like praying on time is one of the most beloved acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, missing out prayers or praying them outside their time, that is considered a major sin. Yeah, the least thing that you can say it's a major sin. While well, some other scholars have made it even something much more bigger than this. So, Praying on time is one of the most beloved acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second most beloved act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is birrul walidain. As he said, thumma birrul walidain. Being dutiful to your parents. Now here this hadith, birrul walidain, being dutiful towards your parents. And what does it mean, being dutiful towards your parents? Is it just you know, obeying them, is it just, you know, giving them their rights? No, birul walidin is much more than that. Some people think that birul walidin is just 
listening to what they say, obeying their commands. It's more than that. It's doing your best to please them. It's doing your best to take care of them. It's going out of, out of your way to make sure that they are very well taken care of. Okay? And this is a right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you as a Muslim. And this is, as I mentioned, here the hadith said, Birru al And that's not if your parents were Muslims only. Some people, they come, their parents are non-Muslims. They said, do I still have to be good towards them? Of course you do. As long as they are your parents, they have rights upon you. And of course, of the good towards them is to talk to them about Islam, taking the proper opportunities to teach them about Islam. At the same time, you be good towards them and you obey them in what they command you unless they command you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in this case, no creature is obeyed in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is plain and simple. Okay? So this shows you, this hadith here clearly shows you that taking care of your parents is one of the most beloved acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just after praying on time. The third thing the, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned, al-jihad fi sabilillah, fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, he mentioned birrul walidain before mentioning al-jihad fi sabilillah. So birrul walidain, taking care of your parents is even more preferred and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting that risk and doing all these, you know, being through all these hardships. So this hadith shows you the importance of taking care of your parents and it is the second most beloved act of worship after praying on time and it shows you the dangers of leaving prayer or praying it outside its designated time that this is you know something is considered at least a major sin okay we move on to the next hadith the dementia that the prophet muhammad sallallahu mentions here he said or this this is not a hadith actually this is a saying of ibn umar رضي الله عنه عن عبد الله بن عمر قال رضا الرب في رضا الوالد وسخط الرب في سخط الوالد so ibn umar says the pleasure of the lord lies in the pleasure of the parent and the anger of the lord lies in the anger of the parent interesting رضا الرب في رضا الوالد وسخط الرب في سخط الوالد what do we understand from this first of all this is not a hadith this is a saying of the companion. So what do we benefit from this a saying of a companion? This is his understanding. And the understanding of the companions is very important to us. How do we understand the text of the Quran and Sunnah? It is through the companions and the followers. This is where we get our religion. Our religion was carried to us by the companions. Who narrated the hadith? The companions. Who are the ones who recited for us the Quran and carried the generation after generation? Who's the, who are the ones who took it from the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu The companions. And Allah Azza wa Jal has chosen those companions to be the companions of the Messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu due to the purity of their hearts. And of course, it's not that they are in their uh, specific person, they are, they are people that do not make mistakes. No, but they are, they say, Hasanatul Suhba, la tudahiya shay. You know, the, the good of being a companion to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu this good deed, there is nothing that is equal to it. There is nothing that is equal to it. Being a, being a companion of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu that by itself is such a great act of worship. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has favored them over those that came after them by making them companions to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu So Ibn Umar here says, let's look at what he's saying. He's saying, Rida Allah, Rida Rabb fi Rida Al-Walid. The pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of the parent and the anger of Allah, the Lord, lies in the anger of the parent. This is true for most of the times and not always. Most of the times and not always. Why do I say this? Most of the times pleasing your parents is usually being good towards them. If they, for example, asked you to stay with them, if they asked you for some dunya favor to spend on them, to take care of them, of course, yes, pleasing them is pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, there's no disagreement here. There's no differences here. But what if they did command you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ah, here there's a problem. Here there's a problem. If they do command you to disobey Allah 
or not to worship Allah or even uh, to miss out on something that is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about obligations here. We're not talking about sunan. We're talking about obligations to miss out on a prayer. In this case, we say no. Allah, uh, okay? A creature is not obeyed in disobeying the Creator. Plain and simple. Who's the one who gave those parents their rights? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who commanded us to obey them and be good towards them. So we cannot obey them in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, then the next question will come. The common mistake is that if parents command that Muslim, that person, to disobey Allah, they start shouting at the parents. And they start getting angry at the parents. This is also haram. Subhanallah. Yes, this is haram. You're not allowed to do this. They're still your parents. There still, there still should be respect. You don't answer them, you don't obey them in this matter, but you still give them your good companionship. Even if they were disbelievers, subhanAllah. And some people, subhanAllah, you find his parents, people who pray on time, and mashallah, they're righteous people. As soon as there's a problem between them, disagreement on something regarding the dunya, he starts getting angry on them. And he starts using verses of the Quran and Sunnah, subhanAllah, against his parents. Look, as soon as you're going to be arguing against your parent, this is a losing argument, seriously. Because they have rights upon you. It doesn't matter what they do. Look, if it was these dunya matters, wealth and money, yeah, these things are small, okay? It's okay. Well, uh, this word that he said, it disrespected me. Yeah, it's okay. Forgive. Who cares? He's your parent. He's your father or she's your, or she's your mother. Things happen. They might get angry. They might shout at you. They might say, this is not right. They are your parents. They're special people. They're not like any other people that you deal with. They have special rights on you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates from you these small things. Sometimes it's very difficult. But you're doing this for the sake of Allah. Now we have other situations. The parents might be extreme. Who might be saying, Ya khi, you know, leave this sunnah or, you know, just, or might be even doing some bad things. In this case, we say, you know, you try your best to be good towards them, but you do not obey them in what is haram. And you try to balance it out. Okay, you try to balance it out. So you deal with them, not like you deal with any other person. You take care, there should be respect in dealing with them. But at the same time, you should not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for every different situation, different case, there's a different ruling. Okay? So, Ridha Allah, Ridha Rabb fi Ridha Walid, yes. Pleasing. Uh, the pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of the parent. Yes, if they commanded you what is of their rights or what if, or of, of the umurs, the matters of the dunya, yes. But if it was disobeying Allah, even if they are angry with you, even if they curse you, subhanAllah, some cases they command you with something that is haram, you say, look, no, or take a bank loan, okay, you know, build this house and take a bank loan, which is clearly haram. You say, and they say, well, if you don't, we're going to be angry. And uh, we're going to curse you. We're going to make dua against you. Where are they going to be doing dua? They're going to be asking Allah, who commanded you in the first place, place not to disobey him. Okay, so in this case, say, look, this, I'm not going to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll try to work out something different. You know, I'll try to please you in other things. But this specific matter, I cannot, you know, agree to this. This is haram, okay? And you say that in a polite way, inshallah, and... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid you and bless you. Even if they curse you after that, that has absolutely no value. And inshallah, khalas, and you'll be safe. Now, we move to the next chapter where Ibn Bukhari said, Babu birrul um. Okay, Babu birrul um. So, this chapter, dutifulness to one's mother. Now, these hadith are specific to the rights of the mother. The famous hadith, a man came to the messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulallah, man abar, or man abar, qal ummuk. Qult, man abar, qal ummuk. Qult, man abar, qal ummuk. Qultu, man abar, qal abak, thumma al-aqrab, wal-aqrab. So a man came to the messenger of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He asked him, who should I be dutiful towards? He said, your mother first. And then he asked, who should I be dutiful towards? Again, he said, your mother. Third time, who should I be dutiful towards? He said, your mother. Number four, who should I be dutiful towards? He said, your father. So 
if you're going to be dividing it, the rights by four, three parts are for the mother and one part for the father. And then the messenger Muhammad وسلم, he added something. And then after that, after the father, it is the closest. After that, the closest. So it's the closest. So the closer that person is to you, the more rights he has upon you. Definitely the mother is the closest. That's why she has three to one compared to the father. And both parents are closer than anyone else. Okay? So this is what we understand from this hadith. Does that mean being dutiful towards your mother and taking care of her? This is even a great act of worship, something that might expiate your sins? Yes. And we're going to be ending, to explain, explaining this, we're going to be ending with a story that is mentioned here, a very interesting story that has a lot of benefits. That is mentioned after this hadith. Imam Bukhari mentioned the story that happened with Ibn Abbas. So basically, عن ابن عباس أن أنه أتاه رجل فقال إني خطبت امرأة فأبت أن تنكحني وخطبها غيري فأحبت أن تنكحه فغرت عليها فقتلتها فهل لي من توبة؟ قال أمك حية؟ قال لا قال تب إلى الله عز وجل وتقرب إليه بما استطعت فذهب فذهب فذهبت فسألت أمان السنين فذهبت فسألت ابن عباس لما سألت عن حياة أمه فقال إني لا أعلم عملا أقرب إلى الله عز وجل من بر الوالدة سبحان الله interesting story أمان came to the to ابن عباس he said well you know I proposed to a certain woman I wanted to marry her and she refused and obviously this was someone, one woman that this man was, you know, attached to her and he wanted to marry and she refused. Then another man proposed to the same woman and she agreed and accepted. The man says, then I became extremely jealous. Look, extremely jealous and envious. What did he do? فَقَتَلْتُهَا He committed this crime and he killed her. Subhanallah. Look at يعني, what this led to being jealous, being envious, that she refused him, and she accepted someone else, he ended up killing her. But after that, so this is a, subhanAllah, the shaitan, envy, jealousy, this is from the shaitan. But then, alhamdulillah, and he felt that what he did was wrong, and he wanted to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted Allah to forgive him. So he went to the people of knowledge. Look. He didn't go to someone praying the masjid. He went to the people of knowledge. He went to Ibn Abbas, a scholar. He said, now how do I repent? Is there anything that I can do? So look at the knowledge of Ibn Abbas. He said, he asked him a question that some of you might say, what does this have to do with anything? He said, do you have a mother? Do you have a mother? That man said, no. Apparently she passed away. He said then, خلاص, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do as much good as possible. So the man went. So another man came to, the, to Ibn Abbas. He said, why did you ask about his mother? What does this have to do with anything? Yeah, why did you ask about his mother specifically? Look, Ibn Abbas said, إِنِّي لَا أَعْلَمُ عَمَلًا أَقْرَبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ بِرِّ الْوَالِدَةِ I do not know any act of worship more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than being dutiful towards the mother. So for those people, and I'm one of them, who feel that they are lacking and who feel that they are, subhanAllah, have done a lot of bad things and they want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they want Allah's forgiveness and they want Allah's approval, go back to your mothers and try to be good towards her. Make up for those things that you were lacking by being good towards your mother. This is the advice of Ibn Abbas. For a person who has done, you know, killing, a per killing another person unjustly, this is one of the, yeah, one of the, they all agree that this is like one of the biggest, most ma major sins after shirk. Yet Ibn Abbas said, you know what, if you have a mother, he said no. Then that man, when he asked him, said, if he had a mother, I do not know any act of worship more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than taking care of the mother. Subhanallah.
Look at this, a source of forgiveness. What about those people? Oh, wallahi, when we remember the times that we were lacking or we were not good towards our parents, this is something bad and you know, it eats our hearts. If you have your parents still alive, make up for this. Sit with them. Be good towards them. Listen to what they have to say. Sometimes just listening, calling them, listening to what they have to say. This is a great act of worship. Making them smile, or making them laugh. This is something great. Bringing happiness to their hearts, giving them something. That's a great act of worship. What if, as this person said, my, both my parents, for example, someone says, both of my parents are dead. Or my mother died. Said, so, okay, take care of your father. They're both dead, make dua for them. Make dua for them, that Allah Azza wa forgives them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon them, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises them in paradise. Okay, so we understood from this athar, the statement of Ibn Abbas, the importance of taking care of the right of the mother, and that this expiates sins and is an act of worship that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that might cause forgiveness. With this, we will end this first uh, lecture, inshallah. We will continue next week. Uh, unfortunately, I have an event in Abu Dhabi. So inshallah, we'll be continuing the week after. Okay, so next week, there won't be a lecture. It's going to be the week after, inshallah, we'll be continuing. And this will be a continuous uh, series of lectures after every Friday after Jum'ah, inshallah. Hada wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair.